When the film begins, we're treated to a very gripping and suspenseful scene set many years in the past. The story introduces us to a snow climber who's on a challenging expedition toward a mountain peak. During his journey, he stumbles upon a mysterious and glowing sphere of ice. Curious and intrigued, he attempts to break it open with his pickaxe, but instead, he's suddenly engulfed in a blinding, intense light. Following this strange encounter, he experiences a brief blackout. When the climber regains consciousness, he discovers that the glowing sphere has mysteriously vanished, leaving no trace behind except for a peculiar scar on his hand. Unbeknownst to him at the time, this sphere is of extraterrestrial origin. It's an alien device that has extracted DNA from his hand, a part of an elaborate plan by an alien civilization to send a human-like representative to Earth, setting the stage for their mysterious and potentially sinister agenda. Fast forward to present day America. We meet scientist Helen, who's returning home after a day at work, accompanied by her son Jacob. Her routine evening takes a sudden turn when she receives an unexpected and cryptic phone call. The caller informs her that she'll be picked up in a few minutes. Before Helen can fully process this information, government agents arrive at her home and urgently escort her away. She hastily arranges for a neighbor to look after Jacob and departs with the agents. Helen is taken to a military base where she joins a group of other scientists. Upon arrival at the base, they're instructed to give away all personal communication devices, including cell phones and cameras. In a quick moment of discretion, Helen manages to hide her phone. Inside the base, Helen reunites with her colleague, Michael. In a conference room, Michael briefs her on the extraordinary situation they're facing. An unidentified object has been detected beyond Jupiter's orbit, coming towards Earth at an alarming speed. The object's projected trajectory suggests it will impact Manhattan with the potential to annihilate all life on Earth in just over an hour. The assembled scientists are tasked with a daunting and seemingly impossible mission to find a way to save humanity from this impending catastrophe. Soon after, Helen, along with a group of other scientists, is ushered onto a helicopter. Their mission is to come up with a plan to ensure survival amidst the impending extraterrestrial threat. As the helicopter approaches the anticipated impact site, the scientists brace for the worst. However, to their surprise, the moment of impact is eerily silent. Instead of devastation, they witness the astonishing sight of a massive sphere descending from the sky. As the helicopter lands and releases the scientists, Helen cautiously approaches the mysterious sphere. From within the sphere, a humanoid figure emerges and approaches her. Just as Helen is about to make physical contact in a gesture of greeting, the moment is shattered by snipers who open fire, injuring the humanoid figure. Helen rushes to the figure's aid, calling for medical assistance. In the ensuing chaos, a gigantic robot emerges from the fog, emitting a sound that causes immense discomfort to the humans and disrupts all nearby electrical systems. Before the robot can retrieve the injured being, it's commanded to stand down by the humanoid figure itself. In a race against time, the humanoid figure is swiftly taken to an operating room for emergency medical treatment. The doctors remove the bullet and discover that the figure is encased in a weird substance, which starts to peel away on its own. Astonishingly, the being transforms into a human-like baby. Placed in an incubator, the figure undergoes rapid development, maturing into a full-grown human adult. Upon regaining consciousness, the now human man experiences convulsions inside the incubator. The Secretary of Defense, Regina, meets with Helen and the team to discuss this extraordinary being. The humanoid introduces himself as Klaatu, claiming to be a representative of a coalition of alien races sent to Earth to communicate with world leaders. Regina informs Klaatu that she's the highest ranking official he'll meet and urges him to convey his message. Klaatu refuses to comply. In response, Regina orders that Klaatu be sedated and interrogated, disregarding his request to be taken to a secure location for diplomatic talks. The tension escalates as Helen, facing a moral dilemma, is asked to drug Klaatu. Michael, another character in the story, is against this idea, but Helen decides to take a risk. Instead of administering a sedative, she injects Klaatu with water subtly aiding in his escape. 
Kuanto, revealing his extraordinary abilities, takes control of the mind of a government officer during a lie detector test. He obtains valuable information, including an escape route from the facility. Utilizing his powers, Klaatu generates high-pitched sounds that disrupt the electrical systems, enabling him to break free from the center. This escape highlights Klaatu's superhuman capabilities. Once out, Klaatu heads to a railway station. However, he's hindered by the re-emergence of his bullet wound, which begins to bleed again. In need of assistance, he contacts Helen. Responding to his call for help, Helen arrives with her son Jacob. Klaatu, now in Helen's car, assures them that he's a friend to Earth. As they drive through the rain, Klaatu guides them, revealing more about his mission and capabilities. Meanwhile, the arrival of Klaatu's sphere has triggered global panic and a swift military response. Efforts to destroy the giant robot, which emerged alongside Klaatu, initially seem successful. However, the robot proves to be more formidable than anticipated, neutralizing most of the military's attacks. The military captures the robot, hoping to gain insights into its technology and Klaatu's intentions. During the journey, Jacob inquires about how humanity should respond to the alien presence, whether to stay, run, or fight. Klaatu's cryptic response suggests that none of these options are viable. He instructs Helen to pull over, leading to a meeting with a man named Wu. In a surprising revelation, Wu discloses that he's another alien who's been living amongst humans for 70 years, sent by the same group of alien civilizations as Klaatu. Wu shares his observations with Klaatu, stating that he has found humans to be destructive and resistant to change. They discuss their mission's purpose, to save Earth from the destructive path humanity has set upon. Following their revealing conversation, Klaatu ventures into a forest where he commands a smaller sphere, concealed in a pond, to activate. Their purpose is to transport various animal species off the planet, in preparation for the alien civilization's drastic plan to annihilate humankind. During this unsettling period, Jacob confronts his mother, Helen, about the presence of Klaatu and why she's compelled to assist him. Helen, grappling with the complexity of the situation, can only tell Jacob that it's complicated. As they witness one of the spheres ascending into the sky, a sight replicated in various locations around the world, Klaatu returns from the woods. He explains to Helen the dire state of the planet and his race's intention to save it from human destruction. Helen, in a desperate attempt to avert disaster, tries to persuade Klaatu that humanity is capable of change and can make the Earth a better place. Their conversation is interrupted when a police officer spots Klaatu and alerts the authorities. In a tense encounter, Klaatu inadvertently causes the police car to strike the officer, leading Jacob to accuse Klaatu of murder. Displaying his extraordinary abilities, Klaatu revives the injured officer, demonstrating his powers of healing. Seeking further guidance, Helen takes Klaatu to meet Dr. Barnhart, her professor friend. Dr. Barnhart discusses the evolutionary journey of Klaatu's race, which collaborated drastically to prevent their planet's destruction. He asserts that Earth is facing a similar critical moment, arguing that humanity deserves a chance to evolve and understand the need for change. Amid their discussion, Jacob sees Klaatu on the TV news and decides to inform the police. As helicopters close in on their location, the trio flees into the woods. Helen is quickly captured by the military, leaving Jacob alone. He witnesses Klaatu's extraordinary ability to destroy two helicopters using his superpowers. Terrified, Jacob runs away but slips on a bridge. In a dramatic rescue, Klaatu saves Jacob from falling. Meanwhile, at the examination tower, the giant robot is seemingly destroyed. However, in a startling turn of events, it transforms into a swarm of winged insect-like machines. These self-replicating entities begin to consume every object in their path, spreading rapidly and reducing everything to dust. This scene symbolizes the unstoppable and devastating force of alien technology, capable of eradicating human civilization as a means to save the planet. As the dramatic events of the movie reach their climax, Helen attempts to convince Regina that she has a way to halt Klaatu's apocalyptic plan. Meanwhile, Klaatu and Jacob find themselves at a cemetery where Jacob's father, a war hero who has sacrificed himself for peace, is buried. Jacob implores Klaatu to consider saving Earth, 
drawing a parallel between Klaatu's mission and his father's noble actions. However, Klaatu remains resolute in his decision to proceed with the plan. At this critical point, Helen and Michael arrive at the cemetery. A heartfelt moment unfolds between Helen and Jacob as they reminisce about the loss of Jacob's father and share a tearful embrace. Witnessing this emotional bond between mother and son, Klaatu begins to reconsider his stance. Moved by their display of love and humanity, he decides to give humanity a chance and agrees to try and stop the alien insects. The group rushes back to the sphere, the source from which Klaatu believes he can halt the destructive insect-like beings. Concurrently, Regina tries to persuade the president to delay any military action and give Helen a chance to stop Klaatu. However, the government, skeptical of Helen's plan, proceeds with its strategy to destroy the robot using military force. As Helen, Klaatu, and Jacob make their way to the sphere, they notice eerie signs of evacuation and deserted streets. But as they near the sphere, a government-authorized bomb strikes it, causing their car to flip over in a violent crash that instantly kills Michael. In the aftermath, Helen, Jacob, and Klaatu seek refugee in a tunnel, where both Helen and Jacob begin to suffer from severe nosebleeds, a sign that insect-like beings are infiltrating their bodies. In a desperate plea, Helen begs Klaatu to save her son. Klaatu, fully grasping the gravity of the situation, decides to absorb the infection into his own body. In a final act of sacrifice, Klaatu strides into the storm of insect-like figures, making his way toward the sphere to put an end to the invasion. His selfless act effectively neutralizes the insect-like beings. Klaatu's sacrifice ultimately saves humanity, halting the invasion and stopping the destruction. The movie concludes with the ceasing of the alien threat, leaving Earth in a state of technological paralysis but with humanity intact. What did you think of Klaatu's character? Was he pretty interesting or was he kind of a cliche? Let me know on a scale of 1 through 10 on the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video guys, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next movie recap.